globalization is a topic that commonly comes up now, and of course it's a difficult one. And it's basically an economics one. And behind a lot of this, if you've traveled far enough, is theoretical economics, often put forward, incidentally, by tenured academicians whose job is not insecure, not, uh, as to how we can maximize production. And these are often people who believe that there's no end to resources, no end to energy. Uh, they look at man as an economic animal. If you feed him and entertain him, he'll stay quiet and not cause wars. Uh, that's an oversimplification, but it, it keeps going. We went through the economic union. There's a long story about how Cordell Hull, who was FDR's Secretary of State in the Fr Second World War, came to the conclusion that most wars were economic wars, basically. And if you could, instead of emphasizing the nation state, if you could cripple it by making sure that one state grew the food, another one produced the coal, someone else produced the steel, someone else did other things, that no individual state would be able to put together a war machine. So that's another thread in this whole thing. Uh, I, I can just say that it's a complex question, and this, the startling proposal we have now put forward by President Bush and signed by Presidente Fox of Mexico and the Prime Minister of Canada, whose name I can't recall right now, that we're going to try to have some sort of North American Union with a common per exterior perimeter and with free migration of labor within that, wherever they want to go. Well, then the next step after that will be the Western Hemisphere Union, right? So where does this end up? It brings us back to the ecologist question that Garrett Hardin talks to, to ask, which is, and then what? What's the next step in these things? Do you want to go there? For the, we, we think that things like NAFTA have had very uneven effects on the population, and a lot of times the people who are worst off in the society have been affected the most. For instance, about two million Mexican maize corn farmers have been forced off the land because they can't compete with corn growing in Iowa. Well, if you're forced off the land, what do you do? Where are, your, where are your economic opportunities? Well, they're in El Norte, north of the border. We had many maquiladora plants along the Mexican US border that were formed. And the people who were employed in those plants were mainly women. Well, the, most of them were married, so the men came along, and the men stood around and had nothing to do, so they were a ready, ready uh, displaced workforce to move north. So. There's, there's no simple thing that you can do that doesn't have consequences. And you better think long and hard about the consequences and make sure that you want them.